Hello again everybody, I'm Larry Hamilton. Welcome to my YouTube painting channel. Thank you for watching. Today we're going to do a watercolor painting and it's of an old abandoned copper mine that I have no photograph of. I just sort of made it up. <clears throat> I use some uh, references from some of my other favorite artists, particularly uh, Sterling Edwards who does some of these old type buildings. And uh, so I just sort of created a sketch out of uh, several other paintings and images and photographs that I've had. And I want to take you over to the computer now and we'll talk about that and, uh, and we'll come back here and we'll get started. Hold on just a minute. Okay, I'm here at my computer now and uh, I want to show you the, uh, the scene that's been on the screen for a while. This is just a, really it's a thumbnail sketch that I made of uh, sort of a composite, may some people call them a Frankenstein composition, but I use some uh, buildings and images from other uh, paintings and photographs I've seen, and uh, I think this might make a good composition. At least this shows the uh, darks and lights and mid-values, <clears throat> that sort of thing. And this is all, all I'm really going to work from. Um, I did do a little research. I realized that this was a copper mine type of uh, structure. And uh, so I, in researching, researching those, if you just Google co old copper mines, you'll find that there's a famous one out in Colorado. It's called a Yankee Girl Mine, and this is what it looks like. Um, and I also found some uh, uh, sort of architectural drawings. This is one of the Kennecott Mine up in, in uh, Alaska, and uh, it's been out of business and out of production for ages. So both of these mines are really out of production. and. Uh, uh, so it's kind of up to the artist to uh, make up their mind what they want to do and how they want to do it. So uh, with that in mind, I, uh, I'm using the original photo that I showed you as my value map, value sketch, uh, I call it sometimes. Um, and it shows the dark darks and the lights and the mid values. Um, and then it also shows the structure, but that's really not good to paint. You can't use a, a sketch like this on watercolor paper and try to paint over it. You'll have graphite everywhere. It'll be a mess in your paint. So I go back and just really make sort of a line drawing out of it, um, just with the outside edges of the silhouettes and uh, leave out all of the shading and anything like that and uh, any of the dark values. So that's really what I want to uh, work from today. That's what's on my paper. And as we'll get started, I'll take you back and we'll go to the easel, easel and I'll go through the paints and the brushes and uh, we'll get started painting this. So hold on. Okay, I'm back at my easel now and uh, you see here I have on the, uh, the board here, I have my uh, sketch that you just saw. I have my value map or my thumbnail sketch over here. I have the, uh, the main sketch here that we're going to work from. And uh, I'll set it up in a second. I want to really go back and show you the paints and brushes and uh, explain them to you again. I know I do this every time, but sometimes uh, people that watch me all the time uh, know what this is. But if this is your first time, maybe you'll uh, learn something here. Um, I use a, a palette made by Sterling Edwards, sterlingedwards.com, and a set of brushes that he uses, which are bristle. These are two of the five brush set he has that are just pure bristle, but they're very short, stubby bristle brushes. And uh, they make some neat effects, some neat blends, uh, some neat uh, grass effects and that sort of thing. So I use them for that. I have a couple of nylon brushes that have a one inch and a half inch, a few rounds, a number 12, a number 8, number 6, and uh, a number 4. And then I have, I'm sorry, the number six is the rigger. That's the number six rigger. And then I have a one eighth inch uh, flat here that I may or may not use. Um, I may or may not use any of these brushes or any particular ones anyway. Um, I will use some brushes, that's for sure. Um, but the paints, let me go around the, the palette here and tell you about the paints. These are Holbein uh, transparent watercolors, a very beautiful Japanese watercolor uh, set of paints. And uh, I have here, the color is Payne's Gray. Cobalt Blue, Ultramarine Deep Blue, Royal Blue, Permanent Violet, Green Gray, Umber, Burnt Sienna, Quinacridone Scarlet, Bright Rose, Brilliant Orange, Quinacridone Gold, Permanent Yellow Deep, and Cad Lemon Yellow. So that's the paints. These are the brushes. That's the way the palette looks. I'm going to uh, shrink it down now and I'm going to put it over here and move my palette around a little bit or my 
camera around so I can get this thing in uh, sort of in the place so you can see both the painting and the uh, palette. Zoom in just a little. Uh, go back a little bit here. All right, I think that's too much. Um, all right, I think that's got about everything in there. All right, so so I can take this palette on uh, for you people watching live. I'll have I'll put the palette on and I can take the palette off um, and I can move it around so that it won't be covering up some of the painting when I'm uh, working on it. Um, however, I do sometimes step in front of the camera and I have another camera over here and I do an editing after this and put a new version of this out on my uh, YouTube channel. All right, so this is a sketch. It's really hard for you to see, I hope, because I have uh, taken my uh, kneaded eraser and I have sort of lightened up some of these lines so they don't show so prevalent through the, uh, through the paint. Um, and this really doesn't look like a rundown structure. It looks like sort of a, maybe a a new mine or a new uh, structure. So I'm going to try to rough it up a little bit, add some abstract shapes and that sort of thing. Um, and uh, so we're going to start right now. I'm going to use this uh, one inch uh, bristle brush with just clear water. And uh, I'm going to start making some color here in my palette. First of all, uh, I want to get a um, sort of a, a background color. There's going to be some trees in the background here and it's going to get darker so we can outline silhouette this part of the building. And uh, I want to make up some of those colors right now. I'm going to use some of my my blue, my royal blue and a little bit of my uh, um, green gray. And uh, I'm going to get a nice dark bluish color there that will kind of fit in the background. Uh, for a bunch of trees. Now this, I'm, I'm assuming this particular um, copper mine would be in an area like either Colorado or in um, Alaska, but I found out there are a lot of copper mines, were a lot of copper mines in uh, in Michigan. Uh, and uh, matter of fact, I got one of those sketches I showed you a while ago, that architectural drawing from uh, a, uh, a government website that uh, showed the layout of the uh, uh, of the uh, what a st structure actually looks like. Um, so anyway, uh, let me see. Those are a couple of colors I'm going to start with. I'm going to have some violet in there as well. Let me put a little pad of that out here and just get a few colors mixed up here so that I have some color that's ready to go once I get the water on the paint on the paper. So I'm going to just leave a little bit of this here, clean out my brush, um, and we will start by wetting this paper down. I'm going to wet down most of it. Hope you're hearing me okay. I, uh, it looks like from all the controls I see here everything's coming through so uh, if you're not please chat. I do have a, a computer up here by my easel and I have a little chat window open and so if you want to talk to me on the live broadcast you can type something in and uh, I'll try to check it and uh, get back to you with an answer or with uh, an explanation of some sort. And uh, so I'm just going to wet down the sky here. I have a little bit of this purple left in my brush, which is fine. Uh, I'm just going to wet down, try to keep some areas. I want to keep the whites. Uh, pretend, I'm pr proposing the sun is coming from this direction. So this is going to be a white. This is going to be fairly white. This is going to have some shadow. Going to have some white hitting this roof and hitting this roof um, and, uh, so, and this roof down here even. So uh, I'm going to try to uh, preserve that if I can remember where the sun's coming from. Um, that will be a good thing. Um, so I'm just going to wet this down uh, with a lot of water and uh, and we'll start going here. I'm going to try to have some snow right in here. Uh, make this sort of a winter scene. It is winter right now, so uh, we will uh, assume this is a abandoned old mine setting somewhere in the snow. All right, now let's look. We're going to start in the back here with some of these trees. I'm going to put a light coating of this uh, quinacridone gold <coughs> around. <coughs> Excuse me just to uh, lighten it up a little bit and <coughs> warm it up. Excuse me again. 
And uh, I'm going to come back now with my green and my blue here. And uh, we'll just start putting in some colors here that uh, it's really running. I need more green. I need more blue and get some of this green here. Change that color a little bit. Uh, something like this. And uh, over here we'll put a little more that color right in here like that. And uh, so I'm just kind of abstractly placing these marks here in this wet on wet approach. Okay, and I'm going to have a little bit more probably down in this area. Um, I've got a uh, set of some structure here that I'm uh, going to have to paint around, but I'm going to paint right over it and then use my brushes to sort of lift out the uh, lift out those beams that are holding that up on the left side, that uh, the braces that are holding this. Uh, I don't know exactly what you call that, but it's uh, it's probably where they either bring copper down or I don't know exactly what they might do with that, but it's certainly a structural piece you find in all of these types of uh, um, old mines. All right, let's go back here and see if we can put a little more of this darker color, get a little more of my dark blue, maybe some of my purple, and uh, Hit a couple more spots over here to uh, keep it um, there. We go like that. I'm just gonna let that run. Hopefully, it doesn't run too far down here. If I take my paper towel and sort of stop it right there, that's see, I didn't put water there, so it's uh, not able to run. But even even where I don't have. Uh, plain water it will it will run if there's enough paint in it okay so that's a good reasonable good backdrop there for the trees I can come back as that dries off we'll uh, come back and put a few more uh, tree looking elements in there I want to sort of soften this I don't want it to, to harden up um, I want this to be soft over there. I want to get some depth. I'm using this brush just as a lifting tool. Like over here, I could use it to sort of lift out this thing that looks like, like a, almost like a conveyor type of thing. Um, got some other beams and boards in here that I can lift out. Um, I'm just drying out the brush and using it to pick up whatever will come up. This, I didn't tell you, this is 11 by 14 Fabriano Artistico paper. It's very conducive to letting, let you pick up stuff. Uh, it, uh, the surface of it is designed, is such that it's really easy to pick up uh, paint with a brush or just paper towel or whatever. All right. So that's that. Um, let's see, while that's drying a little bit, I'm going to get my other brush here, get my one inch brush. And I'm going to try to leave this alone. And we're going to pick up some uh, combination of this quinacridone gold. And uh, I'm going to put it in here like this. And sort of bring it down like that. And then come back with some of my complementary color, this uh, permanent violet. And on this side, since the sun's coming from over here, I'm going to uh, sh shade this side over here like this. And hopefully get a uh, nice complementary contrasting color and so you look at that and you say boy that looks dark well 
it may because this is all going to lighten up. Um, it will lighten up a lot. 20, 30 percent, it will lighten up. So I'm painting around some things here. All right. Um, let's leave that. This side over here is going to be, I'm going to make it sort of a light gray, get a little of my Payne's gray out here and a lot of water and just sort of hit it very lightly right here like that it's going to be lighter let me paint around the uh, roof here okay all right that's part of that structure um, I'm going to leave that. I'm gonna, I think that looks okay. Um, over in this area, I'm going to get a little bit of uh, my, uh, oops, not cobalt, I want uh, ultramarine blue and a little bit of my Payne's Gray. I'm going to try to put just a very light coat here of, I'm doing wet on dry now. And that's going to be snow when it lightens up. Top of this roof here, let me put a few more things under here like this. I'm going to paint around these roofs. And just we're going to just gradate, just gradate it down, light, getting lighter as it comes forward. Okay. All right. Down here, we're probably going to have the same type of stuff going on. Uh, a little bit of uh, ultramarine and. Uh, colors down here like this and a few make it look like it might be snowy uh, clear water pull it across like this I've got a side of this building here that's coming out like right in there Let's do this okay I'm just putting a very light light coat of this blue mixture that I have, thinning it down with a lot of water so that it's going to look like, I want it to look like snow in the foreground too. A lot of water. Okay, so I've got a Good covering of what looks like might be snow, good underpainting here around these buildings. And I'm trying to leave areas for this roof type structures that stick out there, a couple of them. So from a composition standpoint, you see I've got areas where I'm going to have my darks, but I've preserved a nice white section here. Some white sections here. This is going to be a little darker. I think I'll go ahead and put a little bit of uh, shadow on this roof right here. Um, with my, I'm only using this one inch brush so far. That's all I've used. Um, change the color a little bit like that. And maybe something down here like that. And then let's just a little warm color here to differentiate it. All right, so that gives you a little bit of a distinction between these two. Um, I don't want all this to be hard edge down here, so I'm going to get my bristle brush and, and get some clear water and basically 
soften some of these edges right in here. This edge right here needs to be softened. Um, I have some hard edges over here that could be softened. Okay, so now this up here I've got um, pretty well done. I can come back now and put another coat. This is still pretty wet. I don't want to get in there too soon uh, and mess with it, but um, I'm going to uh, put some more trees and more structures back there. So, but you see the outline of the buildings now. You see this building here, you see the roof over here, there's another building. Has a little front on the top of it here, a little uh, porch-like thing sticking out. Um, I have a little porch-like thing on this building too, I think down here somewhere that I've probably covered up by now. Um, that's why sometimes the sketch is hard to see, but it's also good to uh, to be able to see enough that you can know where to put things. Um, right here I've got a uh, another front. <clears throat> I think I'm going to pick up some of my browns here. I haven't used any of this brown color. Let's see if we can put a little bit in here like this. Get this building better outlined. And since this is <clears throat> a little bit in the shade, I'll do this that and then the lighter side is going to be a lot of water maybe the same color but a lot of water here because it's going to be light lighter okay now you can see I have buildings soften a few edges here let them blend together so it doesn't look like I've got them just stuck on. Uh, okay. Here, it's, that roof is going to be um, going to be a little bit of a uh, grayish color, I believe. I'll make it a little bit of a grayish color, maybe. Um, where am I? Right here. Yeah. More blue than gray. One way to get a good gray color, by the way, I got yeah, Payne's gray, but I can also use this burnt sienna and my um, ultramarine blue. Burnt sienna and ultramarine blue will make a nice gray color. And you can have it, depending on how much blue you put in it, you can have it more to the blue side or you can have it to the brown side, depending on what you put, how much of one color you put in over the other. Okay, so I'm just putting in a few marks here that designate this roof. Adding a little bit of here, over here, this down there like that. All right, so at least you can tell I have a, a roof there. This roof on top is going to be probably mostly white. I may just take a uh, swipe of some kind and just put a down there to help delineate it a little bit. And uh, I don't have to do a whole lot more there. Maybe over here we'll put a, a bit darker. It's not very dark. Darker. Over here, let's put this. All right, enough of that. This area here needs to be darkened down some. I'm going to go in with another layer of my color. More quinacridone, and maybe I'm going to gray it down just a little with my... Now this is another gray you can make with quinacridone and uh, violet. Put those two together, permanent violet and quinacridone gold, and you'll get an interesting gray color that um, use for things like this. And more like that. And then 
let them sort of bleed and run together like that. So we're getting a nice, interesting color on the, this side of the building. I want this here to be darker than this because this is where the plane of the building changes from a side to the front view. And whenever you have that, this corner, this area is called the change plane accent. So this particular part that's out of the sun should definitely be darker than the part that's in the sun. So you'll see me trying to make these things darker here. And hopefully that's going to tell that story better. And then we're going to have some more shadows over here from this particular roof. And we're going to have some shadows here and here. Like that. This one may be a little too big over there. Okay. Okay. All right. Now we've got the front of this building here. I'm going to come back and get some more of my brownish color, my burnt sienna, and see if we can put in a front on this guy. And um, Underneath, this side is already dark. Underneath here, this is going to be dark, really dark. Um, I'm going to start looking at some of my darks now. Although I think this is dry enough, I can come back, start putting in another layer of, of trees back there. I'm going to go back and get my... Uh, I think I'll, I'll use my one inch flat instead of this one. I'll use this the one inch bristle brush I'm going to use to sort of soften edges. Like if I want to soften that edge right here, I'll just come in and tickle it like that and give you some things to so it doesn't look like it's all hard edge. Okay, now trees in the back, trees in the back. Let me get in here and get some more of my greens. Uh, this lemon yellow in here with my blues, my purples, and even throw some of this green gray in there. Okay, so back here we've got some areas that are still kind of hard. Um, actually, I want the darkest to be over here, maybe. Let's look at this, see if we can put in some things that look more like trees over here. We'll put in a thing here it looks like. Just blow it in there. Over here we're going to have a um, like this like that okay I just painted a tree that's called negative painting folks I'm sure you've seen me do that before maybe if you follow me at all and I'm gonna have one right in here too might as well um, right in here there we go all right so there's a couple of negative painting trees for you. Um, over here I'm going to put a few more darks. This is really a good dark mixture. I'm going to paint around a chimney that's going to go in here somewhere. I just leave that white. Okay. Let's take a few of these purples and greens and One of you. Okay, 
and this over here I'm going to just throw in some blotches of color and some streaks like this I'm going to come back with my um, hard to paint and talk at the same time uh, come back with my bristle brush and soften some of these edges and let this sort of just go all abstract over here. Okay, we don't need, need much else. Um, it's going to have a tree there, but I'm going to forego that right now. All right, I'll mess this up a little bit so it doesn't look perfect back there. Um, and then uh, I can even come in and <clears throat> use my script liner here and maybe put in a few more trees back there. Get a very dark mixture here with my script liner and we'll throw in a few trees back here that sort of fit the uh, motif like that. Something like that. Maybe there's a few more coming out this way that kind of go up like that. And uh, that may be enough for right there for right now. Um, I've got this area here that I want to uh, work on. And uh, take this brush, a little bit of water on it, and just sort of soften that edge, pull it together. Okay, um, this corner is a little bit too light for me. I'm going to just put in a couple of things over here and again I'm going to abstract it out by using clear water and just softening it up a little bit, merging it together. Okay, all right, so we got positive trees, negative trees, abstract trees, uh, and that's kind of the way I want to leave it if I can. Uh, here we're going to uh, show some stuff on this roof that we've got some maybe some shadows coming down. Um, this area over here is really dry. So I'm going to come in and get my colors of my trees again and we're going to see if we can put in some background work here. Make sure I got my angles right. See how the dark makes this all show up? You put this in, you just sort of stand back and watch it. A little bit, a little bit rougher than I would like it, but I'm going to uh, deal with it. This is an old, decrepit thing, so I guess if I don't make it perfect, that won't be a problem. Um, Too much water there it's going to blossom on me and just leave a few things here that make it look like there's something going on back there that's not just perfect all right down here this area let's sort of blend in soften up A few colors over that. Okay. Now, half inch brush. Get my uh, brush out of here. Half inch brush. We're going to, uh, first of all, I'm going to try to pick up a little bit of this paint that's in there. And myself a little bit of a 
something like that and then come back with my Payne's gray and put in this window or this opening right here okay we have some shadows over here like that have some shadows under here like this shadows here a few shadows there maybe some over here all right just to uh, break it up so it's not just all one color and I don't want to forget my chimney on this guy over here we need to have a uh, put a those now this color over here to uh, do some shadow more shadow here okay maybe a little bit of this brown on these things this can be all rough it doesn't have to be perfect As a matter of fact it's probably better if it's not perfect just sort of make it um, so there's a uh, set of things going on here that might be real might not we don't know um, over here we probably got a couple of big openings that maybe work on a sort of a deck or a dock that might be like this maybe and we have a few posts that maybe hold this thing up and uh, over this way get some more shadows going put a couple of uh, things in like that then use our brush to soften those edges to pull it down make it a little more abstract okay here let's put out a couple more shadows here this is looking a little confusing to me right now I'm gonna to have to straighten that out it's not perfect back there all right let's uh, put another layer of dark here to see if we can pop this out even more like that there we go the dark makes the, the case of <clears throat> watercolor the dark makes the light appear in the case of oils you have the dark and then you put the light over it and it, it makes it show up so here you put the lighter colors on first and gradually darken them down to get the degree of impact that you want so here I'm putting in a very very dark super dark background that's going to highlight this thing over here I'm going to do the same thing just come down and put another streak down okay so I've got that pretty well closed off the same dark color however I want it to be above I don't want it to just be below that beam it's going to look goofy if we don't bring it across the top here so let's put this in Okay, it'll just leave that sort of, again, very abstract out there. All right, how are we doing on time here, folks? 40 minutes, huh? It's taking a little longer than I thought, but we're, we're getting there. All right, we'll leave that building alone for now. We might come back and put a few touches of, uh, I'll put a little more something here like this. 
It's not nearly as light as I want it to be, but we can have some stuff growing on it, moss and all kind of stuff. Um, over here, this needs to have some more windows. We're going to put another window like right here. Big long window, observation window, I guess it would be. I don't know. Um, up here, we're going to put a couple more windows, and like right about the same height as that one right beside it. Um, and three of them in there like that. And they're just sort of hanging together. Okay, down here, let's put in this. We've got another sort of a roof-like structure or something that's over Just make it sort of blend together. Use this brush and pour it down. Come back and put just a few more touches in there to sort of loosen it up. All right. Um, sort of ad libbing here, folks. I uh, don't have any particular. Thing to go from. I'm just sort of reacting to uh, making darks and lights. Over here, I want to have some very dark underpainting here, under uh, around this little chimney. So. this that pick up some lighter colors and throw in a few shadows here shadow here maybe something like that looks kind of dark right now. Pull it down just okay so we got a sort of a dilapidated thing going on here. Put in a bit of that with a Warm it up a little bit with some orange. Okay, there we go. Some more of this dark, dark blue and purple, and we're gonna <clears throat> come in here and put a, uh, like a dark in here, like this. It's gonna go all the way down to the ground. 
uh, like that. And here do this. Okay, okay. Got a uh, wonder uh, it's gonna leave. Leave a post here, a couple of posts. A couple of things look like posts there. And then a outline that. Leave it white for the most part. Something there to show we have a. All right, give me more of my wet brush to uh, soften a few edges. All right, now what else we got over here? We've got some more. I'm going to throw some more wood looking structures over here. Somewhere here we've got some more wood. Sort of comes out like this, and something like that. Another roof over here. Of a lean to type of thing. Here we got to do a uh, short break and get a drink of water folks my hand is cramping up hold on okay I'm back so we got some warmth in here I don't know if that light color looks like snow back there or not but at least we've got some a good mixture of warm and cool colors in here um, and I'm back there trying to do this Paint in sort of a fence like thing back here. Something's going crazy here, like this. Let's put in a. Close it off. That'll work. Okay. And I we'll want to do a little bit of our edge softening here. Okay, um, I've got some trees there in this area that I can throw in and some debris and some other things here in the foreground I'm going to throw in. I'll be getting my script liner out um, and see if I can make some of these trees look reasonable here. Let's see. Sorry, folks, my hand's still cramping up. I can't paint with my right hand right now. Could try it with my left hand. Ha <laughs> ha See if that works. It's not going to work. Um, right here. Not too bad. About that, left-handed. 
I take medication that needs me to drink a lot of water, and I don't drink enough water. When I get into a long painting session, this is uh, not too bad, but my hands will cramp up and uh, causes me some pain and anguish having to mess around with it, but that's the life I have to live. Okay, a few more here. Big, long, tall things that kind of stick out. And these things were kind of overgrowing, getting into the structure here. them sort of crisscross. It's always a good idea to do that. Um, down in here we're going to have some more stuff. So it looks like grass is growing up. Um, a lot of dead grasses and stuff flung around here. All right. <clears throat> Let's see if I can get my bristle brush now. This thing is really good for making um, grasses that kind of stick up out of the ground and, and uh, good for snow scenes as well. Um, but I can just take enough of this on this brush and throw it in somewhere and little grassy things like that. Um, like that. Over here we're going to put a few more in. This is sort of getting overgrown. Enough of these over, you'll you'll really get the message that this is an overgrown, abandoned structure out here in the middle of nowhere. That's too much water in there. You see, it didn't it didn't really spread out. You see how the how this sort of all messed together. So I can come back now, and maybe take a drier brush and flick up like this. And. These bristle brushes are great for that. They got a thousand little paint brushes right there, and you can just flick them and make the paint do whatever you want. Okay, um, what else? Oh, I think I can put in a few here. We're going just about an hour, not too bad. Um, <clears throat> throw a few. Uh, vertical uh, things in here to sort of look like we got some boards and things. Probably there's even some sort of an old some sort of a structure that was there and uh, make this a door that looks like it's coming open. Put a couple of shadows on these things that kind of make them full, look like they're even these beams have some character to them um, this side over here let's put a few things down to that um, one more up here to do that um, these beams sort of need a little bit of something to make them look a little more like beams instead of just a white opening. Yeah, we need some sort of a thing here. Um, could show some maybe uh, things laying out here like some pieces of wood or 
something sticking out of the snow or like that. Maybe there's some pieces of debris and stuff over here that are laying around old boards. This one here it looks like it's something laying out of the snow, doesn't it? It's kind of just by putting a little dry brush on there, it made it kind of a neat looking thing. Over here, let's thing I always like to do if I don't forget to do it is to uh, get a lot of water on my brush a lot of this paint whatever is laying in the palette <clears throat> and just sort of do some splattering that always brightens up and loosens up a painting especially when you're not doing a representative uh, realistic type of painting. You always want to do something like this in your paintings to give them it just shows you're out in an area that's got a lot of uh, stuff going on. It's not neat and clean. It's not perfect. Um, These things up here could be messed up a little bit even. Uh, okay, so that's not too bad. Um, in this area here I got some, I could probably put in a few more things that look like there's some structures or something back there by just wetting this uh, area back here. Um, we can do that and let that set for 10 or 15 seconds. and. Uh, Come in and just sort of scrub out some things that look like there's some beams or something back in there, right? Um, same with any of these real dark areas. I don't know if I've got enough dark in there even. I probably could come back and darken some more of these areas if I want to. Um, but right now I think I've been going an hour, uh, almost an hour since we started. and. Uh, I think I want to just sort of let this ride and try not to do too much to it. There we go. This side over here needs a something like that. Could have a few shadows on here that sort of indicate there's some trees or something around that make it look like we've got some something going on and around it. Even on this roof we could have a few more dots up there. Certainly on this roof down here it's a big space. I don't want to leave it with nothing going on. And even here. Uh, well, white areas. Um, over here let's put in a few more things to kind of tie this together. So it's not all just sitting out there by itself. Okay, and a little soft brush work here. Okay, uh, I think I have a spot for me to put my name over there on the right side. So I'm going to do that now with a little bit of this permanent violet. <coughs> And okay, all right. I think that's enough for now. I'm going to uh, back this up, and I guess that blue does look a little snowy, doesn't it? it certainly doesn't look like grass. So uh, I guess that's. Uh, kind of what I was going for there. At least I got the colors. I like the way this this looks uh, on, on the camera at least. It looks good. Um, and so it kind of looks like something that's been left to kind of run down. It's not perfect. And uh, that's what I wanted to show you today. So uh, thank you for watching. And if you give this a try, there is a sketch like this out on my website. There's a link below the video. 
I don't have a photograph because this was no photograph. It was just basically it came out of my head with a few structures from other paintings. So um, that's what I wanted to show you. Um, if you like this, please share it and uh, subscribe if you're not a subscriber. And uh, if you like the music that preceded this live broadcast, uh, check out AntonioRomo.com. Also, if you like these kinds of paintings, uh, check out SterlingEdwards.com. He does a lot of these old abandoned buildings or old derelict uh, barns and stuff. Um, and he does them in this, sort of this abstract um, impressionistic way, which is kind of is what I like about it. I don't know, hope you like it too. Um, so uh, check out my website and check out my Facebook page. And uh, till I see you again, I think this is uh, what I'm going to do now. Saying this is Larry Hamilton saying so long for now. Bye bye. <laughs>